Hi guys, welcome back to Killer Concepts, the place where we talk about all things true crime. My name is Peyton and welcome back to part two of the Fred and Rosemary West story. If you have not done so already, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so that you do not miss a thing. To anybody who has not watched part one of the Fred and Rosemary West story, I highly recommend that you do so. That is the video that will give you all information on who Fred West is as a person and who is Rosemary when she meets Fred West and how they ended up meeting each other. This video is mainly about their life together and the atrocities that they committed. And so let's get started. So as I said in the end of part one, in 1969, when Rosemary turned 16 years old, she would actually move out of her family home and she would move in to the caravan that Fred West had been living at with his stepdaughter Charmaine and his biological daughter Anna Marie. But it wouldn't be long after Rosemary had moved in with Fred that the two would become pregnant with Fred's third child. In 1970, Rosemary would give birth to their first child together named Heather and Fred would support the family by doing odd jobs and committing thefts. He had a knack for uh, petty crime and that's something that he did to help support his family. And the family would end up moving out of the caravan and they would move to a two-story home in Gloucester on Midland Road. But not long after the family moved, Fred would actually be sent to prison for petty theft and evasion. And he would end up leaving young Rosemary, who was about 17 years old at the time, with three children. Only one of them was her own, and that was Heather. And then the two other were Fred's children, his stepdaughter and his biological daughter. And this is a lot for a young Rosemary to handle. As I have read, and I'm sure many others have, Rosemary was apparently prone to a very violent outburst and she was extremely cruel to the children. More so than Anna Marie, she was very cruel to Charmaine. And this is something that Anna Marie would end up telling later in life, but she was so cruel to Charmaine, she'd do very cruel things to her. She'd beat her, she'd make her stand around naked, and she would just fly into fits of rage and apparently one of the things that bothered her most about Charmaine is that she did not really show much emotion. She did not give Rosemary the reaction that she wanted and that infuriated Rosemary. And unfortunately in 1971 before Fred West would return home from prison, his stepdaughter Charmaine would go missing. It is believed that Rosemary had went into one of her rages and she had killed young Charmaine. Charmaine was only eight years old at the time. And Fred West always said that he had nothing to do with the murder. But it is believed that when he got home, he actually helped move the body from where it was and reburied her somewhere else. But before he'd bury her, he would remove her fingers and toes. And this is something that I had mentioned that he had done to Anne McFall in part one. So it would seem that Fred was now developing a signature for murders or victims of his wife's murders. So Fred would be in prison for six months and then on January 29th, 1972, the two would secretly marry in Gloucester. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Now, don't forget, Fred still had a wife named Rena Costello that he was separated from at the time. And Rena would end up coming to Fred and she would be searching for her daughter Charmaine. Clearly her daughter Anna Marie was there, but where was her daughter Charmaine? And she couldn't find her. And Fred would actually end up killing Rena. He didn't want her digging any more into the situation. And so he'd kill her 
dismember her, remove her fingers and toes, just like everybody else, and he would bury her. And so Rena was then gone and was no longer a problem to Fred. And so far in this story, Fred has killed multiple people and Rosemary has killed one. So Fred, when he worked as an ice cream driver, he had killed the four-year-old young boy. And then he would end up killing Anne McFall. He kills Rena, and then his wife would kill Charmaine. That is four people dead so far in the lives of these two people. And it would only become worse. So in June of the same year, Rosemary would actually give birth to their second daughter named May. And this is when Fred and Rosemary would realize that they were outgrowing their small two-story home on Midland Road. And this is when they would make the move to the famous 25 Cromwell Street. Rosemary actually helped pay for this move alongside Fred because she was prostituting herself at the time to make extra money for the family as well as to be able to afford this house. Family had decided they had outgrown the other one and they needed a new one and this is where they'd land. It is reported that Rosemary would end up inviting both men and women over to this house uh, to do sexual acts. But when she would do a sexual acts with women, she would do things that were extremely cruel to the point that they would cause pain. And Fred would enjoy this so much that he had actually drilled a hole in the wall so he could watch Rosemary perform these acts on people. And this is something that the two of them liked to do. Fred West would also continue to commit unspeakable acts there. So we know throughout his adolescence into his adulthood, he had been attacking young girls and this is not something that he ever would stop. And he would only grow even harsher. So he would commit acts of bondage and violence against young girls. And he would end up turning the cellar of their home into a soundproof torture chamber. And this is where they'd end up keeping multiple girls for extended periods of time and only one of them would end up making it out alive. So unfortunately, once Fred had constructed his torture chamber at 25 Cromwell Street, one of its first occupants would be none other than his young daughter, eight-year-old Anna Marie. This was his biological daughter, and he decided that he was going to perform rape and sexual acts on her. So she would be subjected to brutal rape, and her stepmother, Rosemary, would hold her down the entire time, no matter how much she fought back. This was a very frequent occurrence for the young girl. And they would tell her that if she would ever tell anybody that they would just kill her. And that can't do anything but terrify a young eight-year-old girl. And it's, it's just disgusting how anybody could do this to somebody in general, let alone your own child who's only eight years old. But in late 1972, the sexual abuse and assault would end up extending even further beyond the West family. This is when the family would hire a 17 year old nanny named Caroline Owens. She would be uncomfortable in the home and when she'd try and leave she would be stripped down naked and then she would be raped by Fred West and Rosemary West and the two would threaten her just like they did young Anna Marie that if she were to go to the police that they would find her and they would kill her but the young girl would end up getting loose somehow so she would end up escaping and she would run home and her mother would end up calling the police and charges would be brought against both Fred and Rosemary West for the rape of this 17 year old girl. While the West should have been charged for this brutal act, unfortunately the Wests would end up convincing the magistrate in 1973 that Owens had consented to the acts 
committed against her, the rape and the torture. This is partially because Owens was too frightened to testify and give her own testimony in court and so Fred West was just able to convince the magistrate that well if she's not willing to testify it's because she consented and they would end up getting away with it and they would do no jail time again just like when Fred West had raped and impregnated a 13 year old girl but the two would end up getting fined but clearly that is not enough for what they put the young girl through. What might be even more twisted is at the time of the capture, rape, and the trial of young 17 year old Owens is that Rosemary was actually pregnant with their son Stephen at the time. This is a pregnant woman participating in gruesome and disgusting acts with her husband upon other people's children. And I just don't get why somebody who was as brutal and cruel as Rosemary West and had a husband as brutal and cruel as Fred West would continue having children and bringing them into the world to be brought up the way that they're living. So the West would get let off the hook and this would be the magistrate's biggest mistake because this 17 year old girl was the only one who would ever escape the West again and anybody else who they would bring down into their torture chamber would never leave alive including their own daughter. Over the next several years the West would rape, torture, and murder eight more girls. These were women Linda Gal, Lucy Partington, Juanita Mott, Therese Segan Thaler, Allison Chambers, Shirley Robinson, Carol Ann Cooper, and Shirley Hubbard. After brutal sexual acts, every single one of the girls would be tortured and they would end up being dismembered they would have their fingers and toes removed. It was like a memento for the Wests. And then they would bury these young girls in the cellar or in their garden. Rosemary West would also give birth to several more children. Not all of these children were believed to be Fred West due to her prostitution and the affairs that both of them would have. And these children would be daughter Louise, who was born in 1978, son Barry, who was born in 1980, daughter Rosemary, who was born in 1982, and daughter Lucy Anna, who was born in 1983. All of the children in the West household knew that there was something going on inside their home that was not right. But all of the kids were taught that they were not allowed to say anything about it. And there would become a saying in the household that was extremely sick. So aside from the rape and murder of people outside of the West's own household, Fred would not lose his interest in his own young daughters. And so when Anna Marie was old enough to move out and live with her boyfriend, that's what she'd do to get away from her father's torture. And so he would turn his attention to his next oldest daughter, Heather. But Heather was not as obedient as Anna Marie and she would scream and she'd fight back and she did not want to be a part of her father's sexual acts. Fred would also set his gaze on Heather's younger sister, May, but she would not fight back as much. And so in 1987, Heather had been fed up with her father's behavior and she would end up telling one of her friends. Because of this, Fred and Rosemary would murder, dismember, and remove the fingers and toes from their own daughter, Heather. They would then take her to the garden in the back of 25 Cromwell Street and they'd bury her back there. And they'd basically just say that she went missing. But the rest of the family knew what happened. And the reason the rest of the children would keep their mouth shut is because Fred and Rosemary West had started saying that if you ended up talking in the household, you'd just end up like Heather back in the garden. And 
this is what the family would say and it's extremely disgusting that a parent could ever say that about one of their dead children let alone be the one who committed the crime perhaps the murder of heather is what finally would break the camel's back in this case because fred and rosemary west had committed so many sexual acts and crimes they did not always murder everybody who made it into their home like i said rosemary was a prostitute but they did commit very sexual acts very abusive acts and some of them were not by consenting adults and so it was only a matter of time before somebody said something and that's exactly what would end up happening so a detective by the name of Detective Constable Hazel Savage would get interested in the Fred and Rosemary West case because somebody would end up saying something to him. And so in August of 1992, he would issue a warrant to search the West's home. Once police were in the home, they would immediately find proof of child pornography and child abuse material including videos that fred had made of people and they immediately knew they had hit the jackpot now both fred and rosemary west were arrested immediately so off the bat fred west would be arrested for the rape and sodomy of a minor and rosemary west would be arrested for assisting in the rape of the minor but this would just get them for now because the detective would not give up and he'd continue searching the home. And this is when they'd find multiple bodies and bones in the basement as well as the backyard of 25 Cromwell Street. And this all would reveal the disturbing truth of what the West had been doing all these years in their home investigators would start by talking to fred west and he would tell the investigators that they had everything completely wrong him and his wife rosemary did not just kill people everybody who was buried in the backyard was a willing participant of some kind of bondage sexual activity and that sometimes that activity just went a little too far and all the people in the backyard were just an accident Perhaps the police could have believed that if there was only one or two bodies that maybe somebody had their throat wrapped around a little too hard or sex got a little too brutal. But when there are nine or more bodies in your backyard as well as your basement, the police cannot use that as an excuse. And so they clearly knew that Fred was lying. But one of the first things that Fred West did do is he would say that his wife, Rosemary, was absolutely innocent and that she had nothing to do with any of the bodies at the house. He tried to protect her no matter what. He absolutely adored her. And this would have worked had Rosemary not had such strange behavior as well. She did not seem phased by all the bodies found in the yard and her and Fred's story for where their daughter Heather had disappeared to was that she had became a part of drug smuggling and that's what she did and she ran off with a lesbian lover but the police knew that was too good to be true and Heather would be one of the bodies that would be found in the backyard and Fred's daughter Anna Marie would end up backing up that story and then she'd also mention that Charmaine was missing and they would start putting two and two together all these people that had went missing around Fred and who had went missing around Rosemary and then now there's all these bodies in this yard so like I said, Fred right off the bat tried to say that his wife Rosemary had nothing to do with any of the murders. And the police may have believed that, but Rosemary, her stories didn't make sense. They weren't convincing. They weren't consistent with her husband's. And so the police were ready to nail her to the wall, just like Fred, for every single one of these murders. So the couple would end up having a joint hearing and Fred would try and show some affection for Rosemary and she'd really play into the fact that he had just disgusted her. She was an innocent victim and he'd try and touch 
her hand while they were standing there and she'd pull away and then later tell everybody there that he absolutely disgusted her even though that was her husband and she had participated in the acts with him but she still did not convince anybody then on december 13th 1994 fred west would be charged with 12 counts of murder and 19 days later he would be found hanging in his jail cell because he had committed suicide he couldn't face what he had done and he could not face his sentence so 10 months after fred had been convicted of 12 counts of murder and he had committed suicide his wife rosemary would have her turn in court and she would be convicted of 10 counts of murder two less than her husband because she was not involved in two of the murders that he had been which were for his former wife Rena Costello and Anne McFall. However, she would get a life sentence for every one of those counts of murder and she would spend the rest of her life in prison and she is still alive till this day. And even though Fred was now dead because he committed suicide and Rosemary's last encounter with him was not good, the last letter that he wrote to her said, quote, you will always be Mrs. West all over the world, end quote. So guys, there you have it. That is my story for this week. Uh, if you have not watched part one, like I said, I recommend you to do so because that will give you a lot of information about who Fred and Rosemary are as people. One thing I do want to ask you, kind of like I did in my last video about Mary Bell, is do you think that Fred's head trauma could have contributed to all of these terrible acts that he did? Along with his family life, I feel like in nature versus nurture in this case, nurture definitely took a hold here and I'd love to hear your opinion. And with Rosemary, do you think the fact that her mom had received electroshock therapy while she was pregnant with her could have also affected her as well? And I'd love to hear your opinion on that. So make sure to comment that down below and to like this video. If you have any case suggestions, please send them to my email at killerconceptsvlog at gmail.com. And if you have not done so already, make sure to go follow me on Instagram. I have two. I have a personal one as well as this one, which is my true crime Instagram. I give you any updates that I have as well as when my videos are coming out. And I also put some true crime memes on there as well. Thank you to anybody who has recently subscribed to my channel. I am happy to have you with me and can't wait to do more videos. Before you go, remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places. Stay safe.